What does our brain say about the evolution of our species? The human brain is three to four times as big as the chimpanzee's brain. What ultimately separated our species and sent us down vastly different paths on the evolutionary tree? One major difference between chimpanzees and early humans is that we used stone tools and they didn't. This tells us that our common ancestor most likely used some form of tool as well, and that our species must have begun diverging at the specific moment that their tool usage advanced, perhaps with the creation of the first sharped flakes of stone, but it had to be for a reason. They must have used it for something that our early common ancestor must not have regularly participated in. My theory is that our earliest ancestor must have taken on a slightly more carnivorous diet than their sister species, who most certainly would have remained on a diet similar to that of chimpanzees and bonobos, which is mostly herbivorous with the occasional insect or small animal. Perhaps that means that our earliest ancestor was simply the first to abuse a niche, a niche that would require them to use tools in order to fully take advantage of. It could be that our earliest ancestors were the equivalent of a true caveman that would have eaten raw meat alongside other herbs and plants and used tools to help them kill animals, butcher meat, and process food in a way that would give them some new adaptations that make them very similar to ourselves. Meet Australopithecus sediba. In 2015, scientists discovered one of these stones near Lake Turkana in Kenya, and it was found to be 700,000 years older, which by the way is over 3 million years ago, uh, than any tool found by a member of the Homo genus, which supports my theory that some form of Australopithecus, or perhaps something else, that existed alongside it, split off from our last common ancestor with the chimpanzee, and that their main adaptive and selective pressure was the creation of tools such as the flakes of stone for cutting and with those stones for cutting processing and butchery of meat. The chimpanzee brain has remained relatively similar in size to that of early, early hominins, making comparisons between the human and the chimpanzee very, very good when you're attempting to assess the general intelligence of early Australopithecus and members of the Homo genus. Now, Australopithecus sediba had a brain that was slightly larger than average compared to a chimpanzee, which would make sense if Australopithecus sediba were to pick up some Thing that put it one step ahead of where the modern day chimpanzee is, which could very well be the creation of tools, which we know Australopithecus sediba had, which means they must have been using those tools for the butchering of meat. There's really not many reasons to create sharp flake tools other than to use them as a weapon. Or perhaps they simply used it on meat that they scavenged from other predators, or to process things that would have been acquired by using it as a weapon, such as high hides and fur and the meat. But even before Sediba, we had Australopithecus afarensis. At the site of Latoli in Tanzania, preserves the oldest known hominin footprints that we have found to date. Nearly 3.7 million years ago, a volcanic eruption covered the landscape with a layer of fine ash. As a result of that, we got a surface that was very similar to wet cement, and when animals wandered across it, they left their footprints, preserving them forever. More than 20 20 species left their track, and one of them was Homo afarensis. Homo afarensis made a 27 meter long trail, which must have been absolutely amazing to find in person. Now, Homo afarensis has had no discoveries of tools associated with its species, but considering that it had hands and that all great apes use tools, it doesn't really matter, but the point is, what you get after afarensis is a species that definitely is definitively using stone tools. That means that Australopithecus was evolving rapidly based on specifically tool usage at the earliest stages of its evolution but they weren't even the first ones to use stone tools. Listen to this, there's actually a species that you don't hear much about called Kenyanthropus, or a man that was found in Kenya, right? Some scientists think that Kenyanthropus may be our earliest ancestor due to Kenyanthropus's being bipedal, having smaller teeth, and a flatter face. And tools were found that have been assigned to Australopithecus, despite the fact that Kenyanthropus's body was found far closer to the tools than any Australopithecus finds have so far. 
due to the fact that Kenyanthropus literally looks like an earlier version of a human, far more than Australopithecus would, it could possibly be that we're seeing an incredibly early divergence between two different kinds of bipedal apes. So this is my perspective. It seems that the species with wider faces and big jaws could possibly have retained traits that would benefit them in a forest environment such as longer arms, and as a result they fed mostly on plants such as roots, and that another line started with Kenyanthropus, who used tools in a more complex way to hunt animals consistently, which is why they had smaller teeth, which would have been adapted due to a more specific diet centered around mostly what could have been meat, or possibly even later down the line cooked meat, even if it was only partly cooked, because they didn't exactly know to cook it all the way, still would have been better for creating smaller teeth and a more complex brain than just eating leaves, roots, and stuff like that. It's also, again, a niche that no other ape would have had. It's not unreasonable to think that, and currently we are the only apes on the planet that eat meat in the quantities or even with the specificity that humans do. Humans crave it. Humans genuinely need it, and we know that. We don't like it, but we do know that, and it's something that every culture has. But the problem is that we haven't discovered any definitive traces of fire by any hominins from this era, including Australopithecus. It's not unreasonable to think that we may never find traces of fire, but that wouldn't necessarily mean they didn't use it. But again, it could literally be that they simply did not cook their food all the way, or again, that they just ate raw meat. But the creation of those tools would still have given them an edge over their hominin cousins, who perhaps went down a different line. This would have made it much more likely for our hominin ancestors to go down the route of the savanna and the plains, hunting on those, as opposed to the other line, which would have been similar to Paranthropus, for example. It's possible that we're going to eventually notice a line of apes that ultimately leads to Homo paranthropus, which is a dead line of the Homo genus that had a mostly herbivorous diet, and that another lineage that focused on tool use, hunting, and cooking went down the path to becoming Homo erectus. This also has support from the hunting hypothesis as well as killer ape theory, two other things that I've done videos on. Again, it's all just a theory, but I think this is a solid one. That's all I'm saying. You can make the decision for yourself. Nonetheless, what this could mean is that the chimpanzee went down a line of evolution that will never stress the creation of stone tools as their evolution since the split with our common ancestor has went down a path that would not stress tool creation and usage as much as it would other traits such as general strength and agility, ultimately causing the quote-unquote culture of the ancestor of chimpanzees to lead them down an evolutionary path that would make them truly fit for their name as Pan Troglodytes. But it has to be said that our common ancestor that split would have had to have split based on some specific things, and one of those things would most definitely have been tool usage, ultimately using fire, and then an increased brain size as a direct result of that. And so I think with chimpanzees, ultimately they become a lesson for humankind that says that once again, we can point to a time in history in which an outdated mindset completely doomed an entire species. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a good day.